Well, good morning everybody and welcome to this the second uh, video assembly which I'm giving to you. I remember my name is Steve. I'm the vicar of Burnham Market. And this week we have been celebrating at St Clement's Church in Burnham Overy Town our Harvest Festival. Harvest Festival, as you will remember, is the time when we come to celebrate together all of God's gifts to us. And as I was thinking about celebrating God's gifts, I began to wonder about all the things that we don't know. I'm going to start by asking you all a question. Where do eels come from? Where do eels come from? Actually, this is quite an old question and people have been trying to answer it for a very long time. And it was only very recently, uh, in, the, in the 1900s, uh, that they discovered where eels come from. Now, we knew a lot about eels. After all, we eat them. Some people like them jellied. Some people put them in beer. I think the Swedes like to do that. And there is a very famous restaurant on an island in the Thames. And the island is called Eel Pie Island. And of course, there, <laughs> they put the eels in pie. There's a very well-known recipe. And if any of you want it, just give me a call. But the question is, where do they come from? And for such a very long time, nobody had any idea. Tiny little eel larvae would arrive at certain times of the year at the mouths of our big rivers. The River Glaven nearby in Blakeney is a good example. And these tiny little larvae, once they'd arrived, they'd turn into elvers and they would swim up to the head of the river. Up at the head of the river, they would live there for, they say, sometimes 20, sometimes 30, sometimes 50 years. And then of a sudden, when the time is right, the eel changes from this yellow, rather fat eel, uh, which is the very one that we put in a pie, by the way, into a long, powerful, muscular, silver eel. This eel swims down the river that the tiny little larvae and the elver swam up, so the glaven again, and once it gets to the bottom of the river, goes out to sea, and it swims away. And it was a very, very long time, and after lots and lots of searching, that people discovered where they went. And so the question to you all is, where does the eel go? And the answer is, it goes here. This is the Sargasso Sea. And I hope you can see, it might be difficult to see on this picture, uh, that it goes there, which is all the way near North America. Can you imagine that seal swims 4,000 miles in order to get to this tiny little sea here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? But the Sargasso Sea has been described as a sort of underwater rainforest. It is particularly rich in seaweed, hence the name Sargasso, by the way. And there these big, silvery, strong, muscular eels go. And they disappear. Nobody has ever seen a new eel. Nobody's seen an eel egg. People have lowered buckets and magnets and cameras and all sorts of exciting things into the Sargasso Sea to try and see if they can see the tiny little larva being born. The larva which will come out of the sea, <laughs> the Sargasso Sea, and swim all the way back to the River Glaven, again, to begin the cycle. And when we think about this, how little we know about the eel, which after all, we know enough about to eat, we ask the question, how many other things do we not really know? There are, it seems, 7,000 edible plants, 7,000 of them. Yet nine 
out of 10 of the foods we eat come from only 15. Nine out of 10 of the foods we eat all over the world now come out of these 15. So that means that actually there are still something like 7,000 things which we don't know anything about. And that's one of the reasons why we really must protect our planet, look after the environment, because we might be unwittingly, that means by mistake, be destroying something which is really, really important for us. And we don't yet know. And again, if we don't really know where an eel comes from, just think how many other things 